Good day, good people. In this more practical tutorial of PHP 7, we are going to insert data into a database. I will split this up into several parts. You can click on them in the link below and choose the one that you need. We have uh, covered pretty much of the basics in PHP 7 and in this tutorial we are finally going to do something more practical. Um, well, we, we're going to do the thing that uh, PHP is mostly used for and, and that is send data into a database or take data from a database and display it to the user, uh, something like that. Okay, we're going to create a simple form. We are going to insert something. We're going to create a table and those things are going to work together. So let us get started. That's the only slide that you're going to see here. The first thing you want to do is you want to go to the local host PHP my admin. Hmm? Go ahead, go on local host PHP my admin, and well, don't worry that it's in German here because it looks exactly the same in English. If you haven't created a database yet, click on new. It's the first thing here. Choose a name and hit this button. That's all you gotta do. Alrighty, there we go. We have the table test. Uh, the, sorry, not the table, the database test. And now we need to create a table. I know that there is an easy way to do this, but in this case, you want to go and do it yourself. You could just go ahead and create a table like this, choose the number of columns here. But I highly suggest that you don't do that because when you're a PHP developer, absolutely, you need to know um, MySQL anyways. So you might as well go ahead and learn it now. So let's go to SQL and here what you got to do is you need to well create a database, the table, give it a name and choose the different columns. So create table. That's the first thing. Then you choose your name. We just call it email because we're just going to do a simple form where people can put their first name, their second name and their email address. All right. Just a simple mailing list for this tutorial's purposes. Create table mail, email. Then in between parentheses, you got to choose different parameters. Okay. So we put first name and then you got to choose the type. It's going to be varchar with a maximum of 30 characters. All right. And also this is going to be not null, which means that it cannot be empty. Put a comma, copy the whole thing. For the, the second one is just going to be the name. So first name, last name, we could also call it last name. Doesn't matter really, but it's more readable like that. And the third one is going to be obviously the email and these are all going to be vouchers and they 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 must be filled out so they cannot be empty okay now it's not good practice what i did here because i didn't choose a primary key usually you should do that so let's just go ahead and do that <laughs> uh, well the first one is just going to be the id of this person which is going to be an integer of six characters and this character should automatically increment itself so the first one's going to be a one then two then three and so on but we just want it to be a, a positive number so you have to put unsigned as well automatically incremented and this is going to be the primary key hit comma. So unsigned has to be put before auto increment and primary key. Then we hit enter and perfect green and this sign. So this means that we created our first table here, the table email, just click on it and you see ID, first name, last name and email. Perfect. So that's done. All right. We do this object oriented way because we have already covered the basics of object oriented programming and well there's no no reason why you shouldn't do it in a procedural way i'm just doing it in an object oriented way because this is how you would mostly do it in real life okay now choose a variable name or a object name 
In this case, we choose DB for the database. And this is a new MySQLi object. Highly important, don't use MySQL. This is old and not secure anymore. So e I stands for improved. Choose new MySQLi. And then between parentheses, you met all the parameters that you need. So first is the host. In my case, it's just local host, obviously, because the database is locally stored. The next one is the user. I didn't change it, so it's just root. Again, this is just to show you the basics. This is highly unsecure what I'm doing here, okay? <laughs> to choose a database uh, user that's just root. Why would you do that in real life? You don't. In this case, it's just for learning purposes. Then you got to choose a password. Well, the initial password is empty for the local host in XM. And then lastly, you choose the name of the database, not the table, the database, which is test. Okay. Hit save. Nothing happens. Obviously, it's still empty because we didn't check if anything happens. So may maybe this <laughs> already worked, but we don't know. So we got to check if that works. So if you want to connect to the database, you got to check with an if statement. And you're going to go and say, if this database connection throws an error, which is accessible through connect error number. If the database connection throws an error number that is bigger than zero, because zero means that all went fine. But if there is a is a mistake or if it doesn't work, it will throw one. So you can check if this throws an error message bigger than one. So any error message, you you die the whole process with the statement unable to connect. And you concatenate that with the error number, which you can access like this. Okay. And again, connect error. There you go. Hit semicolon, save and refresh. See what happens. Nothing happens. But we still don't know if that's a good sign here. Just because it didn't throw an error, we're never sure. I like to be sure all the time that it does what I'm what it's supposed to. So I go ahead and say else echo you are fine just just to be safe just to know that everything works here so we are fine perfect and this uh, to me and to you should mean that there is no error otherwise it would have thrown one and i'm fine so we are actually connected to the beta database easy right it's, it's just this and also you can test the third way you can for example put a mistake in here. So it's not a local host anymore. Refresh. Perfect. Okay. So the name is not known and unable to connect. There's, there's the error. So I put an SQL statement here. And this SQL statement is what's going to happen to the database. Again, you need to know some basic SQL here. But now what we did here is we have an SQL statement stored into a variable. You can just as easily as we did before, go ahead and check if the S, uh, the, sorry, the connection query with the SQL works. So if the database connection And then you choose the keyword query and in parentheses, you choose the statement. So SQL. Now that's the query that you are throwing into your database. And if this turns out to be true, so if it works, let's put some spaces here, then obviously you want to echo out the record was created. Else 
obviously you want to throw an error and that goes like so you echo it out error should be fine okay and then in the end obviously you want to close the connection so you go ahead close it like so it's a built-in function in php here you go but we already have this pete and miller and also this can be empty because it gets auto incremented anyway so make peter jones for example p at j okay zack refresh the record was created now it did it really let's check refresh and now if we click on email it should be fine yeah i already see two entries here peter jones p at j d d e and the id was automatically incremented perfect now we inserted data into the database just with these thing with these lines here so pretty easy right but now what if you want an input to be queried and not just well this here for the input to be queried you need to do the following first insert into database and um, well you have to go ahead and fetch data from the user's input okay obviously the user has to input something first before we can access it and work with it so now let's do some html we go into our db file, the method that is post obviously the action should refer to your file the db handler.php that means that this form goes to the handling file and does all the magic that we showed that I showed you just before. And the method is post, obviously. So we go ahead and create an input. Input, hit tab, and it does that. That's why I love sublime text. And the type is gonna be a text. And the name of this field is going to be, well, what's the first one again? Uh, ID. Well, okay, we don't have to put that, so it just stays empty. So we choose the first name. Copy this whole thing. Uh, no, you know what? Let's put a placeholder. I like that. This is just what's going to be shown in the input field for the user to know what it is. And then next thing is the last name placeholder should be last name of course and the last one is going to be our um, email type very handy and the name is email also and the placeholder also perfect last thing is going to be a button to send it obviously type will be submit and this is important the name you have you have to define a name also and it's going to be submit to and it's going to say send now what did we do refresh here and also maybe you should go to the page that is displayed which is php 7 minus 2 there we go. So now we have a simple form. First name, last name, email. Now you can put a first name here, a last name here, and an email here. And what's cool about this field is if you put input type is email, you can send this because it tells you please put in a valid mail address. So let's go ahead and tell it. Phil Jones P at J dot com now if I hit send well it's gone and we are here in the DB handler PHP but now what what has happened here is we have another entry in the database with Peter Jones you'll see that in a minute here we go because every time we call the PHP file we have Peter Jones in it because here 
that's 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 the SQL statement. So what we gotta have to do here is we need to change this name Peter and Jones and we have to switch it for the user's input. So this is how you would do it. You go ahead and define a variable first name and you set it equal to post. This is how you would fetch data from the user's input because we remember we choose the method post and we defined a name first name last name email and with so you can fetch the data okay first name and just copy this last name email This is how you would do it. Now, obviously, we assigned these two new variables. And what we have to do is we have to input this in our SQL statement. So ID, yeah, we can, we just leave this empty. And here we put the first name. Here we put last name. And last but not least, we put email. Hit enter. Refresh this. Undefined variable last name on line 21. There we go. Now let's go ahead and Phil at Jones sent this. Go back and put Mark Phillips and m at p dot com hit send record was created it keeps saying this and if we refresh here perfect we have fill and mark and this is how you would connect to a database with some simple steps if i zoom out you see it's not a lot of code that you need it's pretty easy to connect to a database and insert data into this database and this is all the HTML that you really need. It's pretty easy. Just a form action, the input type, and a button, which makes a beautiful small form with things that you can insert into a database. Again, I didn't cover any security things here. It was just a basic connection. I hope this was helpful. I see you in the next tutorial.